Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to describe or introduce you to uh, Newton's second law of motion. Now over on the left here, uh, this is the picture we're going to work from when we talk about Newton's second law, but before we do that I got a couple things I want to make sure uh, that everyone's aware of uh, before we get to the Newton's second law discussion. So first thing we need to talk about is uh, mass, right? Mass is defined a couple of different ways depending on the course and context, but for right now in this discussion I'm going to define it like this. So mass is defined as amount of matter a system has. It's measured in a quantity called the kilogram. Right? So basically the mass of a system is a measure of how much stuff it has. Uh, a ping pong ball has a very small mass, a baseball a little bit more mass, a person typically a bit more mass, uh, a car even more mass, and so forth. It's important to distinguish, though, between uh, mass and what's called weight. All right? Weight, like if you're watching this video, you have a certain weight, and your weight is the gravitational force of attraction between an object and the Earth. So, you know, a soda can, uh, or maybe a 16 ounce weighs uh, about a pound, I guess. Uh, now, it's important to realize these things are not interchangeable. Weight and mass are not the same thing. They are related. The more mass a system has, the more weight it will have it, you know, at the surface of the earth. But I think the best way to distinguish them is this. If a person were to go to the moon, their mass would not change. At least not a significant amount, you know. They may intake uh, two pounds of food and out, and out might go 2.5. They may drop in mass by a small amount uh, due to, uh, you know, more go going out than in or more in than out. But their mass will not significantly change when you go to the uh, moon. However, their weight would. You weigh considerably less on the moon than you do here at the surface of the Earth. If a person were to go into outer space, they wouldn't have any weight. Their weight, we would say, is zero. But again, their mass is not changing. So mass is a measure of the amount of matter that a system has. It's a measure of stuff. Standard unit is the kilogram. Now, as far as what is a kilogram, well, believe it or not, there is a chunk of metal sitting out in, I believe, France somewhere in a building called the uh, like International um, Standards of Measurement or something like that. Uh, there's an actual um, mass that's defined to be one kilogram, and I believe it's in Europe. But for now, you know, I mean, uh, one kilogram of mass weighs about 2.2 pounds. Again, the weight and mass are different things. Uh, but they are directly related to one another. All right, so mass measures the amount of stuff present. Force, we need to talk a little bit about that. In physics, we usually just say force is a push or a pull. <clears throat> so force typically means uh, just like you think it does. Getting a little bit more specific, force comes in two types. We typically classify forces as either contact forces or field forces. Contact forces are just like their name implies. They're, you know, like this person is in contact with this car, so we would say they're applying a force on the car. Field forces, however, do not require direct physical contact. So some common examples that you may have experienced, if you take a pair of magnets and get them close to one another, you'll be able to feel a force of attraction or repulsion depending on the orientation of the magnets. The important thing to realize is these magnets apply forces to one another without any physical contact. Gravity is another example of a field force. If you drop your cell phone, uh, the gravitational force of attraction will accelerate that phone down towards the uh, ground. With, and again, it does so even though it's not in contract, contact with the Earth. Electrons are particles that uh, repel one another, so do protons, and, and proton-electron pairs attract one another. Those are all examples of field forces. Right. So that's just a little bit of background stuff uh, for talking about Newton's second law. The big ones here are force. Force is a push or a pull. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter a system has. So bear with me here now. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. We don't need this anymore for this discussion. All right, so now let's take a look at this picture right here. And... <clears throat> Imagine that at t equals zero, this car is not moving. So we would say, all right, it's got a velocity of zero. However, this person walks up and starts pushing on the car. Now imagine that the car is out of gear and free to roll. And if this person applies enough force, this car will start 
rolling, it'll start moving. And it's important to realize that as if the person keeps that force applied, the speed of the car will increase. It may take a little while. It might go to one foot, uh, one meter per second. And then sometime later, maybe two meter per second. And then maybe sometime later, 2.5 meter per second and so forth. So as time goes on, if I were to plot velocity against time, it might look something like this. Now, the velocity graph, remember, has a couple properties uh, that are important, slope and area. And the one I want to talk about here is slope. So the slope of a velocity graph, remember, is uh, that'd be change in V over change in T, and that's what we call acceleration. So the slope of this line would be giving the acceleration of the vehicle. Now imagine that a second person, maybe, walks up behind the car and pushes just as hard as the first person. Hopefully it's, it's uh, fairly obvious that they're going to be applying more force to the car and then the car will have a higher acceleration, that is the velocity will change quite a bit faster. So this curve might look something like this. Right? And if a third person applies a force to the car, this curve might look something like this. Right? Newton's second law is a mathematical statement relating force and acceleration. And the first part of it is this. The acceleration is directly proportional to the net force applied to the car. This symbol right here, this means directly proportional. Now, if you're not familiar with a directly proportional uh, relationship, um, if y is directly proportional to x, that means y equals some constant times x. So if the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force applied to the car, and the word net is important, I'll talk about that a little uh, later in the video, that means that the acceleration is equal to some constant times the net force. Now, this is what I'll just say for now is about uh, half of Newton's second law. What it says is basically, acceleration is proportional to the force and what that means is that the more fo the higher this net force the higher the acceleration All right the other important factor here however is the mass of the car if I go back to my original uh, picture here and I get rid of some of this stuff I'm going to get rid of these curves Now imagine a single person applies a uh, constant force to the car. Then our velocity graph might look something like this. Now, imagine, however, I repeat the experiment, except I open the car door and I put in, uh, you know, like 500 pounds of gold or lead bricks or something. I would be drastically increasing the mass of the system. If this person applies the same force to a lot more mass, you know, then the acceleration is going to be less. This curve might look something like this. So if I increase the mass, we decrease the acceleration. And going the other way, if we decrease the mass of the car, you know, I make this car somehow smaller and smaller and smaller, we would increase the acceleration. So this curve might look something like this. So as far as explaining the stuff on a velocity curve, higher force means steeper velocity curve. Higher force means, therefore, uh, higher acceleration. When you're forcing, or when the mass is larger, that gives you a shallower velocity curve. So as mass goes up, acceleration goes down. This is an example of what's called an inversely proportional relationship. The acceleration, it turns out, is inversely proportional to the mass. And here's what inverse relationships look like. So if y varies inversely with x, that means y equals a constant over x. That means that when x gets bigger, y gets smaller. So in Newton's second law, the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass, or we would say it's proportional to 1 over m. Here in this mathematical statement, that means that the mass is in the bottom. So this right here is Newton's second law of motion. And what it says is that the acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. 
Now it may not look like you know Newton's second law if you, as you've seen it in a textbook. There's one more piece I'm going to add. The force is defined in such a way in the in, in the metric system. Force is defined by the Newton. And a Newton is the force that will accelerate one kilogram at one meter per second squared. And when I look at Newton's second law, if this is a one, and this is a one, and this is a one, that means the constant is one. So basically, because of how the Newton of force is defined, Newton's second law is, can be written A equals F over M. Or this is usually written F equals MA when you look in a textbook. And written like this, this is true as long as the force is in newtons, the mass is in kilograms, then the acceleration would be in meter per second squared. The equivalent set of units for the English system would look like this. The acceleration is measured in the foot per second squared. The mass is measured by a quantity called the slug. You know, you know if you're wondering what a heck a slug is, if you take your weight and divide by 32, you would have your mass in slugs. I think that's about all I need to say about it for now. And then the standard unit of force in the metric system, or I'm sorry, in the English system, is the pound force. All right, so in um, metric units, a newton is a kilogram at meter over second squared. That's just what a newton is. In English units, a pound force is equal to a slug foot per second squared. So. Um, this video is just meant to be an introduction to Newton's second law, and here it is, right here. Either you could say acceleration is equal to force over mass, or force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, an important thing about Newton's second law, though, this force needs to be the net force acting on a system. Let me go back and chat a little bit in terms of this car. Imagine this person is not pushing on the car. There are still forces acting on this car. The car's got a weight, a gravitational force uh, pulling down. It's in contact with the road at presumably uh, four points here. I can't see the second half of the car, but I'm sure there's two more tires over there. These create forces upward on the car that in physics we call those normal forces. Now, the normal forces on the car are directed upward and the weight is down. And because they're in opposite directions, and you'll notice that the car is not accelerating up or down, we would say that the net force on the car would be zero, and hence there's no acceleration. However, when this person walks up and applies a force in this direction to this car, now this car has a net force, and that net force would be to the right, ignoring any small frictional forces between the tires. This would equal the net force, and that net force is going to equal the mass of the car times the acceleration. So. Again, this video is just meant to be an introduction in Newton's second law, and there it is. Acceleration is proportional to the force, falls off with mass. I uh, hope this video successfully uh, gets these concepts across. Have a great day.